Life Coach, you need to call me up right now, 1-800-252-1025, or you can email me at lifecoach at kzok.com. Life Coach brought to you by Goldberg Jones, Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE. Let's talk to you, Peggy. Good morning, Peggy. How the heck are you? Good morning. I'm I'm great. Welcome to Seattle, and I've actually seen you twice um, at uh, Emerald and... Um Emerald the Downs, I love that place. The other day. I'm a big fan of Emerald Downs. I'm a big fan yeah. of it. So, uh, do I recognize your voice? Uh, I don't think so. I, I've never called before. Oh, okay. You sound yeah, very familiar I just to me. Saw you make your appearance out there. and well, We certainly appreciate it because otherwise we look very stupid. What can I do for you? <laughs> well, I had this saddle that I was selling, and I actually had it at a consignment shop. And I had a friend that wanted to look at the saddle. So I went to the consignment shop, picked it up. Um, took it to her, showed it to her, she put it in her trunk, and then returned it to me three weeks later, um, put it into my trunk, went to pull it out, and there's a stirrup missing. I called her. It's missing a stirrup? Yes. All right. Okay, it's a leather, it's a Western saddle, and it's a leather stirrup, which the design on the stirrup matches the saddle. Right, right. Is, okay. it, a, is it a show saddle? No, it's just kind of a, you know, uh, all purpose. What's the value on this? Um, it, it was in the consignment shop for three fifty, but I told her that I would sell it to her for two fifty because uh, um, you know, I didn't have to pay the commission on it. The reason I asked that is just out of curiosity. My mother used to dress uh, used to ride in parades oh. and my grandfather and their saddles in today's money, my grandfather's might have been thirty thousand dollars. At least fifteen because of all the silver that was all over it. Right. So, yeah, this is nothing like that. It's just the uh the the design, the carved design in the leather that matches the you know, on the stirrup that matches the saddle itself. Uh, I think I got this. So what's your question? Okay, well, um she returned it and uh, I pulled it out of my trunk, and the first thing I noticed is there was no stirrup on it. So I called her, and she finally called me back that night and said, well, I'll look for it, you know, blah, 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 and then never called me back for like three or four days. So I finally called her, and she won't talk to me, but she keeps sending me these text messages, you know. I don't and what do the text it. messages say? Um, it, well, she said that she would replace bo by two new stirrups, but... The problem with that is they won't match the They won't saddle. match. I got I got that. And so I said I either want the stirrup back or I want the two fifty for the saddle. Right. And um uh no I I don't know what to do from here. I mean um Well, can I tell you this that she only owes you, in my opinion, any money or any stirrups out of the kindness of her heart, you took it back, and once it was in your in your trunk, you kind of claimed it. So I I think your friend's being a really good guy. Yeah, it won't match exactly, but you want it to be two fifty if you had it if you sold it in the consignment store. She's going to replace the one saddle. So this whole whole thing's value is at two fifty. Are you willing to lose the uh, your friendship over a person who sounds like they're trying to do the right thing? I think you accept the stirrup and and move on. That's my call on it. Absolutely, you let her if you. Uh, put on the new stirrup and you put it back in consignment and you sell it and you take the money and you know don't pull off somebody who still wants to be your friend and is going the extra mile she lost it she'll replace it she didn't put the designer on it it's only worth two fifty. dollars it's, it's, it's a fair amount of money but she's going to get you the stirrup back don't blow off a friend that's going out there to try and make men's on this thank you very much for the phone call I appreciate it if you've got a question for Danny Bonaducci Life Coach 800-252-1025 call that number now because any kind of problem He's been through it, and he can help you. You know, I like the fact that this, uh, uh, she's, all her, her friend wants to put that stirrup back on. I don't have one friend that doesn't owe me money right now. This person's doing the best they can to stay your pal. Except for Will. Will's all paid up. Yeah. Sarah in Tacoma, you're on with Danny Bonaducci Life Coach. Hey, Sarah. Hey. So I have a best friend that I've known since second grade. We've been through hell and back together. Like, she's been addicted to meth and, you know, got married at 16, and... I've definitely had my fair share of issues, and we've always made it through together. She just watched my daughter be born nine months ago. Nice. And um, she's been with who's a guy who's like 10 years older than her, who's like physically abused her, not like beat her down, but like thrown her down and just totally treated her like shit. We went to the ocean for Fourth of July to party, and he gets way too drunk and tries to fight my husband and like ruins every time I've ever tried to hang out with him. And he does have a lot of money, so that's why she says she stays with, like, the material possessions, the boat, the quads, and, 
now I just feel like she never comes to visit my daughter. She'd rather hang out with people who are doing drugs, and it just hurts, man. I just don't know what to do. Well, here's the thing. You try and get her the help that she needs, that's for sure. But the other thing is, do you want this girl around your daughter? The last thing I want is this girl making poor decisions, whether it's the meth or she's off the meth now. The, I happen to think one of the worst sins a girl can commit is not that she's with a guy for his dough. I, you know, who would do what for money? I, I, I'm really a big fan of money. Uh, but the fact that she's living in that kind of lifestyle where she's been not being beaten down, but she's being thrown down, uh, I think you you don't want this woman around around your uh, your kid. So do you have a specific question that comes to head to me? Because it sounds like everything's working itself out nicely. Well, I just feel like, should I, should I just... I don't know. I always feel like I should help her. Like 20 years, you know, we've been through hell and back, but I feel like everything I do never works. Should I just like give her time to heal by herself or should I like captain save her? No, don't save her. Absolutely. Don't jump in here and save somebody that doesn't want to be saved. Uh, She's going to ride this out just like she has a bunch of times in the past with you that when it all looks bad and ugly, she's going to ride it out. And my guess is a month, a year, two years from now, she's going to be at your doorstep saying, man, that guy was the worst thing ever. So, you know, what live live your life with this girl uh don't push too hard for her to leave but let you know let her know that you kind of think it'd be better without this guy and when she makes that call you guys can be friends but let it go the way it's going to go naturally don't don't push her on this because i promise you you're going to end up without a friend all right thank you very much for the call i appreciate it if you've got a question for Danny Bonaducci Life Coach, the number to call is 800-252-1025. He's been through it all. I have. And if he hasn't personally been through it, he knows someone who has. So he can help you with whatever kind of problem you're going through. And remember, you can change your name if you need to. And if you need to email, that is lifecoach at kzok.com. JB in Woodenville, you are on with Danny Bonaducci. Good morning, JB. Good morning. What's up, buddy? Oh, uh, I've been uh, communicating with this woman over in Ukraine for about two years now. Right. She's, she's coming over soon, and she wants to get married as soon as she gets here. Yeah. She's a sweetheart. I'm totally in love with her, but I'm just not sure about getting married quickly. What do you think? Uh, I think absolutely not. Um, you know, if she wants to get married for all the right reasons, she'll wait. Wait till we want to get to know each other. Uh, can I ask this a, a question? And I don't mean to you lying to me. I mean, don't you know the right thing to do right now? You don't really need me on this call. You're not going to marry this girl the second she gets here, are you? Nope. Okay, good. But here's the thing. If she gets crazy... And I would do this just for the fun of it. I'd sign every legal document you could in the world, a prenup, go to Goldberg Jones and get a prenup. I don't know if they do those things. Uh, but if she's Absolutely. assistant and you want the ride and it's really fun, you you could do that. But no, I'm so, and just tell her, you know, you've never met face to face. This is the, you got to wait at least six months until you can even discuss it. And that's what I would do. I would pick an exact amount of time that you can't get married before or you can't even get engaged before. So she's ready from the get go. When you say, hey, what? We'll talk about this again in six months. Then you know you don't really have to talk about it for another six months. But don't marry this woman the second she gets her. It's a giant mistake. And in my opinion, and it's not just chicks in the Ukraine, it's anybody anywhere that wants to move out what they've never met yet and they want to get married right away. I don't even know if they're necessarily up to something. That would be my call. This chick's up to no good. Well, how did you meet her and how and who's paying for her to come visit? We met on a dating site and yeah. she's paying for the whole thing. I'm actually going to sign some prenup agreement for her because she's the one that's got money and I don't want it. I don't need it. Uh, hey, why don't you hang up and call right back and say, hey, I'm meeting a girl who has a bunch of money. Should I sign a prenup? And I will say, no, absolutely not. What are you insane, my friend? Don't sign a prenup with the crazy Ukrainian chick that has money. But this thing's, it, it's all good. I mean, we all agree in here. Don't get married right away. It'd be a big mistake. And if she uh, pushes it on you, even if she's the one with the money, get the papers and get yourself covered. I appreciate the phone call very much. And good luck on all that stuff. 800-252-1025. Call that number now if you've got a question that needs help from Danny Bonaduce. Remember, Life you get coach. to look back on this and say, hey, Danny, remember when I started dating the crazy Ukrainian with a bunch of money? Wasn't that fun? <laughs> Remember when I married uh, the girl that I'd never met before on the first date? But you always say Danny's been through it. I've done that twice. Yeah. <laughs> they were, one was true. Japanese and didn't even speak English. I don't know how the Ukrainian's English is. And then she stabbed you. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird one. Look out for those. <laughs> We've got an email from Fred's mom in Seattle. Hi, Fred's mom. She writes, I have a 19-year-old son with severe... I bet his name's Fred. Yes. 
Uh, he has severe autism. Right. He's very intelligent, very sweet. He cannot do most, quote, normal things like feed or dress himself. He's very wow, sensitive. Wow, that's very serious. He's very sensitive to light, noise, etc. Extended families do not get what's wrong with him and they're quick to criticize. My concern is that Fred is not deaf. He hears everything they say. And he tells me later via computer type and speaker software, why are people so mean? I'm very proud of Fred. I never thought he would do as well as he is doing. But how do I explain to Fred that mean people stink and he's just fantastic the way he is? You know what? I, I don't mean to be obvious, but like that. Tell him. Tell him you're always going to love him, but people are mean. And that's the thing. If he's talking, if he can get on the computer and do all those things, your, your, your friends are not the only mean people he's going to get to know. The world is tough, and it's, it's tougher for Fred. And I'm pretty sure he knows that because of his situation, he may not always know the right thing to do, but he does know that people are mean, and he does know it's going to be difficult for him. And I think here's the one thing I hope that he knows, that he's got a wonderful mom that is looking out for him all the way around and, and wants the best for him because that's the most important. Whether your friends come and they go, Fred's life is as difficult as it's going to be. Uh, I, he's not going to let people add to it because, you know what, he's got to, every single day that Fred gets up, he's got to maneuver on what it's like to be normal for just you and me. Fred's got to put on some pants and, and uh, as a matter of fact, I was going to say, feed himself and he can't. Life is as difficult as it's going to be. When you say people are mean, he's going to know that and by the way on this, Fred's going to have a thick skin. He's going to be aware of the way life works and that sometimes God deals a very cruel hand. He knows that. Just love Fred and that's all he is going to need. Hey, thank you very much for the phone calls and the email. That's all the time we have right now for Life Coach. Uh, Life Coach is brought to you by Goldberg Jones, Divorce for Men. Call 1-800-DIVORCE.